Hi, how was your week? I hope you're fine. Um, last week I asked you which topic would you like that we talk about here in the Facebook Lives during the month of April and most of you voted for pronunciation. So this month uh, I'll be talking about different things related to pronunciation. So today I'm going to talk about how we learn new sounds. Uh, in the next week or two, I will talk about the difficult letters uh, in Spanish and common mistakes. And the last week, I will talk about how to practice pronunciation at home. So, let's start with pronunciation and how to learn new sounds. I'll start with an example. I'll tell you later. So, how many colors are there in the world? How many colors? Mm, thousands? Millions? Well, I don't know, but there are many, many colors out there in the world, right? But we don't have thousands or millions of words to define these colors, right? We kind of group them and we say, okay, all this is green, this is blue, right? And when I see a new color that I've never seen before, let's say this one, I will say, okay, this, this looks like blue. But then maybe someone else will come and will say, Laya, this is not blue, this is cyan. And I will be like, oh really? For me, it looks like blue because I've always only seen blue. I've never seen this color before. For me, cannot tell the difference, it looks like blue. So this is something very similar to what happened with sounds. When we are born, we have the capacity of uh, recognizing all different sounds. How many, actually, how many different sounds are there? How many vowels and consonants are there in the world? Many. Again, I don't know how many, I don't know if it's hundreds or thousands, but there are a lot of different sounds in the world. But no language uses all of them. So when we are born, we have this capacity to recognize all these different sounds. But as we grow up, we are never exposed to all of them. So we get used to listen only a certain number of sounds. That means that, for example, let's say uh, I'm Spanish. So Spanish has only five vowel sounds. Five vowel sounds. So. I grew up with these five vowel sounds. A, E, I, O, and U. When I grew up, I, I, I was only exposed to these five vowel sounds, not to any of the other vowel sounds that are there in the world. So then what happens that when we hear a new sound, our brain, what it does is try to find the most similar sound we already know. So let's say, for example, now I'm learning Russian. In Russian, there are two or three letters that sound like E. Of course, if there is someone uh, who speaks Russian here, will tell me, La, yeah, no, they're different. This one is like this, this one is like this, and this one is like this. They are not all E. But since I've never been exposed to these sounds, all of them sound to me like E. They all sound the same. I cannot tell the difference. I cannot recognize this sound. So then what, ha what happens? That when I'm exposed to this new sound, my brain associates this sound to the one I already know, which is E. Then right now I'm also learning Malay. I've been many times in Malaysia. I'm actually in Malaysia right now. I've spent here several months. So I'm more exposed to the Malay language than I've ever been to Russian. So there is one sound that is similar to E, so my brain associates this sound, E, to this one that I already know. But when I say the word queda, which is one state in Malaysia, and my friends correct me, they say, Laya, it's not queda, it's different. I can see that their E is not exactly my E. This one is not the same as this one. I can hear the difference, but still I cannot pronounce. I'm not able to pronounce their E, but I can see that it's a bit different than mine. Then, 
another example. There is another letter in Malay, which is something in between A and E, something like E. Uh. This one is quite similar to a vowel we have in Catalan, which we call the neutral, neutral, neutral vowel. So when I speak Malay, when I try to speak Malay, I should say, I use this vowel because that's the most similar I have to, their, to this new letter, which is somewhere here between A and E, and people understand me. So I assume it's very, very similar to our E, even if it's not exactly the same letter. So I say um, Sire, and people understand. So even if it's not completely right, it seems that this letter that I already know, that I have previous knowledge on, is very similar to this letter in Malay that I can position more or less here between A and E. So I can kind of pronounce this letter even if it's not completely right. And let's say when I was studying French, this French U, the first time I heard this, I was like, what is this? Is it E or is it U? It's written like an U, like a U. So actually, you will recognize most Spanish people who are trying to learn French because we pronounce U as U. We, instead of salut, we say salut. Instead of fondi, we say fondu. Why? Because we still don't recognize this new sound in French and we try to associate to something we already know, which is either E or U, because that's something in between. Then we get to the stage where we can listen to this sound and say, ah, this one is actually different than our sounds and it's something between E and U. And then we get to the final stage where we are able to pronounce this U which is, in fact, a different letter. It's not E, it's not O. It's something in between. It's something in between yellow and blue. It's green. It's not yellow, it's not blue, it's green. It's not E, it's not O, it's U. So why I'm explaining this with colors? Why I'm explaining these things about the vowels? What I want to say is that it's normal that when we learn a new language. There are sounds that we've never heard before and at the beginning we cannot recognize them. So it's normal that when we start learning a new language we cannot pronounce all the letters as they should be because we cannot even recognize them and this is normal because we haven't been exposed to these sounds before. So we are on the stage that I'm now with this Russian E that this sound looks either the same as another one we know before and we cannot pronounce it. Then we get to the stage where we are able to recognize the difference. Oh, there is E and E. These ones are different. There is A and A. These ones are different. I can tell the difference, but I still cannot pronounce. But as we get exposed to the language, we get more used to the sounds. We can recognize them. And finally, we get to the stage where we can pronounce. Like in France, I spent many years in France. I was exposed. I was a lot uh, of time exposed to the French language because I lived in France. So finally, I managed to pronounce the French letters. So I can pronounce U, can pronounce E, and I can pronounce all the French letters that I couldn't pronounce when I moved to France. So what I want to say is don't get stressed if you cannot pronounce all the letters. Just take it easy. Uh, pronounce the letter that's more similar to yours. Most of the time, that won't create a problem of communication. In a few cases, it can. Uh, in the next few days, I will talk about different letters that I've seen that are a bit hard for students. And I'll tell you if they can pose problems of communication or not. If they don't, just don't worry. Pronounce whatever you can. And as you get used to the language, as you get more exposed to the language, as you speak more the language, Finally, you will get to the stage where you can recognize these new sounds and you can speak these new sounds. So that's everything for today. I will see you next week. I'll be back with more energy, more resources, more tips, more learning, and uh, hope you have a great weekend. See you next week. Bye.